Yes, FSR is real. It's a machine learning based upscaler. And if you were wondering if it runs on your older AMD hardware through backwards compatibility, the answer is no. It is only on Radeon RX 9070 series. And we also have more information now about the Radeon RX 9070 series. Uh, we also have some more information about the 9950X3D, a little bit about some more mobile processors, but where is all of this information coming from? Later today, AMD is going to be giving a big uh, press conference at CES with all of this information. However, it appears that their slide deck as is per usual, has leaked online hours ahead of schedule. And this is available here at videocards.com and I will link my sources in the video description. If there ends up being any additional information that isn't covered in these leaks, I'll cover it in, a, uh, in another video upcoming. We're expected to get a whole lot more information later today from CES, uh, Nvidia stuff, new graphics cards, all of that. Uh, but it looks like we have the bulk of the interesting information people wanted to know here. So again, what's going on with uh, FS are for. So we have this slide leaked uh, at videocards.com saying AMD F Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4 machine learning powered upscaling developed for AMD RDNA 4, high quality AI upscaling, high performance with FSR and frame generation, low latency with AMD Anti-Lag 2, and then they zoom in on this footnote AMD FSR 4 upgrade feature only available on AMD Radeon RX 9070 series graphics for supported games with AMD FSR 3.1 already integrated. And the only specific game that they're uh, particularly highlighting here appears to be Call of Duty. So, if we look into this, basically, what are we learning here? Yes, we got the AMD powered, uh, you know, the AI powered upscaler from AMD. It is official. Game support is going to be the big question mark there, saying only FSR 3.1 already integrated games seem to be compatible for that upgrade. Now, how much modders will be able to update that? How much? Uh, you know, uh, game developers go back and implement this, that is a big question mark. But this is one of the big things that I've been saying that AMD absolutely needs uh, if they want to compete with NVIDIA more directly is an upscaler that is AI powered and more of a direct competitor with DLSS. Now, we now know that this is AI powered, but we don't know if its image quality is going to be as good as DLSS. For example, we've seen uh, Sony's uh, PSSR upscaler running on, uh, you know, not RDNA 4, but AMD hardware uh, on the PlayStation 5 Pro hasn't had image quality that I would say is on par with DLSS, but FSR 4 could be different. And again, uh, it is saying uh, that it will only be compatible with the RX 9070 series. Now, it also doesn't even say the RX 9000 series in general. It specifically says 9070. So that leaves some concern over would the 9060 series also support FSR 4. So there's some big question marks here. So the way I would kind of interpret this as probably meaning it'll actually work in games is that if a game offers FSR 3.1, it's prob uh, probably going to be easy to update to this FSR4 model and we'll officially get it at least in one of those games. But I don't think it would just be automatically working in a game that has FSR 3.1. Although, you know, the exact way this is worded is, is a little uh, unclear on that. Could they have been hiding this all, all along? Uh, I don't know. Um, so I would say probably needs an update and it's probably easiest to update if you have an FSR 3.1 model. But again, if you're on an older AMD graphics card, you are not getting this machine learning based upscaler according to that footnote. So we'll have to see how its image quality pans out. And then if the image quality competes with DLSS, we will have to see if it's also as fast as DLSS, meaning are we still getting a good performance uplift from it or is it slower than the non uh, machine learning based FSR? So there's a lot of questions there. And then again, what does that game support look like? Uh, how far does it, um, you know, how, how long does it take to get into a large number of games? But I still think this is a step in the right direction. And I don't think AMD would be intentionally gatekeeping this to their new generation unless it was a hardware requirement. Uh, so in other words, it's possible that AMD's older GPUs just aren't able to uh, have the, the level of machine learning acceleration necessary 
to run uh, this model, at least at you know what maybe AMD is considering acceptable quality. Maybe that does mean it'll be of higher quality than what we would have got if it had more of a fallback. I'd like to get more information on this and I really wanna test out uh, how it actually looks uh, and all of that. But speaking of the new hardware required to run it, AMD is also officially announcing the RX 9070 XT and 9070 non-XT. Uh, and they're giving a quarter one 2025 launch date, meaning uh, at least in the uh, leaked slide materials from videocards.com, there is not an official exact release date yet, just quarter one. Uh, also, there's no specific pricing or even performance information and not even exact specific specs. So uh, maybe that's why we've had a lot less leaks about the 9000 series is that AMD uh, has put out a lot less information about it even behind the scenes because with this official announcement, there's still not a ton of information. We are getting a whole bunch of them pictured. Uh, and I think the closest thing we're getting to some uh, specs information and all of that uh, is uh, that apparently AMD did not present performance slides, but it confirmed that the RX 9070 series will replace the RX 7900 XT, the RX 7900 GRE, and the RX 7800 XT tiers. So. Now that doesn't exactly mean, uh, you know, it's gonna match one of these particularly, you know, ex exactly in performance specs, but if they're not mentioning it replacing the RX 7900 XTX, uh, then it is looking like the rumors that they would not quite be as powerful as the 7900 XTX, they're not chasing the high end, they're going for more mainstream market, uh, does appear to be true. So you would not expect this to be more powerful than their previous generation. What we're hoping is that it's more affordable with, with uh, you know, a, a more competitive feature set uh, th than their previous generations. So that looks like where we're gonna get. Would it have been cool to get some Halo product? Absolutely, but that does not appear to be what we're getting. They did also apparently mention that there will be a RX 9060 series that will succeed the RX 7700 XT and 7600 XT tiers. And that those are the only two series that have been mentioned so far. So while we're not getting exact performance numbers, I guess we can just go off of, at least in rasterized performance, it's likely gonna be in this ballpark. Now, are they claiming any improvements to ray tracing performance? The answer is yes. So we're not getting exact specs and performance claims, but they are saying that there's more optimized compute units, that there's enhanced AI compute capabilities, second gen uh, AI accelerators, improved ray tracing performance per compute unit, that's third generation ray tracing accelerators, better media encoding quality, second generation AMD radiance, engine, uh, radiance display engine, and four nanometer manufacturing process. Uh, so what we're getting out of that is, should it be better at ray tracing than the previous generation? They're saying yes per compute unit, but they're not giving us exact numbers on how much better it will be. So if you have a two models, uh, you know, from the you know 7000 series and the 9000 series with the same number of compute units, they're saying that we should expect better ray tracing performance uh, on that newer model. But they haven't told us how many compute units are in each of these models. <laughs> so there's still a lot to uh, go off of there, right? A, a lot to find out. Um, we, they're also saying the enhanced AI compute capabilities with second gen AI accelerators. So theoretically, that would be what's explaining FSR4, uh, machine learning improved upscaling, powered upscaling, being uh, having that 9070 series requirement is that at least the 9070 series should have some enhanced AI compute capabilities allowing it to uh, run that model, which perhaps the 90, you know, again, this only says 9070. Now I'm wondering if that's just because the 9060 series is further out and that eventually it will support the 9060 series, but it doesn't specifically say that at this point, right? But I think it, it's also possible that they're just focusing on the 9070 right now and that eventually it would also support the 9060, but we don't fully know that. And again, there's no reference to older generations and it could be that that's this enhanced AI compute capabilities uh, being what they're relying on for running that model. So that's pretty much the information we've got to go here, other than, yes, it is the 90, uh, they are uh, going to the 9000 series and they are moving that seven from here. I've talked about this in, in leaks, where we would have expected this to be the 8000 series. And even if they called it 9000 series, you would have expected this to be called the 9700 XT, but it is the 9070 XT and 9070 non XT. 
And is AMD doing that specifically to uh, more closely match NVIDIA's naming scheme? It appears that the answer is yes. They're saying the company also provided an explanation for the new naming scheme. According to AMD, the change to the RX 9070 series was necessary to simplify the model system to match direct competitor comparisons. So match NVIDIA comparisons. They're, they're specifically trying to make it very clear that the 9070 is up against the 70 series from NVIDIA. Uh, to, uh, so yeah, it's directly to copy NVIDIA's naming scheme. Uh, they're also saying that the 9000 series will be synchronized with the 8000 series. So the 8000 series exists, but it's referring to integrated graphics within the Strix Halo APUs. So that's what we have about the 9000 series. We also get uh, some information about the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D CPUs. Uh, saying that it's uh, officially 8% faster on average than the 7950X 3D uh, and 20% faster than the Intel 285K. Now, this, these are official numbers from AMD, which we've seen sometimes can be pretty questionable, although their launch of the, uh, the last uh, X3D processor lines up pretty well with this, with what we saw from the 9800X3D, which did deliver on this uh, about this level of performance uplift. Um, so hopefully, again, this is one of the ones where AMD has kind of learned their lesson on their slides. And here's their official performance numbers. But again, these are from AMD. This is not third-party results. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. But as far as we can tell, there's nothing particularly interesting uh, about this, uh, this result. It seems to be, uh, like I said, fairly in line with what we saw from the 7800X, uh, sorry, the uh, 9800X3D. This would just be your 16 core 32 thread part. And it does appear to have um, the 3D V cache on uh, the one CCD rather than both. So uh, nothing too mind blowing here, uh, other than if you wanted 3D V cache for gaming, but you also wanted more cores for a productivity based workload, perhaps. Uh, this would be an interesting option. Looks like AMD is also going to be talking about some uh, mobile processors and things like that, which are interesting, but is less of the focus on my channel. And I have to get back to teaching today. So, ah, man, I need to end this video. Uh, if there's any other useful or interesting information in the actual AMD presentation that wasn't covered in these uh, leaked slides, uh, expect a video covering that shortly. And perhaps that would be my one that also covers whatever NVIDIA is announcing today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.